All right, in 2023, Tesla had a busy year, lowering prices multiple times, annoying investors and previous Tesla owners. The company also didn't have a nice kick start in 2024. The stock is down 22% in just over a month. And if you stay for another couple of minutes, we'll go through the fundamentals and numbers and valuation, and I'll share my take on Tesla. Last month, Tesla shared its quarterly earnings and the stock fell by 12% in just one day. This was a very disappointing earnings and the two main areas of disappointments were firstly automotive revenue which rose by just 1.2% compared to Q4 2022 and although many of us know Tesla as not just a car company the truth is more than 80% of its revenue comes from selling its vehicles. Total Q4 revenue rose by just 3% compared to the same period last year. And the second disappointment the profit margin tank. With gross margin coming out at 17.6% down from 24% the year before and operating income fell by 47% bringing down the operating margin to only 8. Many people compare Tesla's gross and operating margin to other car manufacturers and say that it's in line or even sometimes lower than traditional car manufacturers but you have to keep in mind that being profitable manufacturing an EV is much harder than manufacturing a combustion engine car and Tesla is already three to four times more profitable than majority of its competitors in manufacturing and selling an electric car. But the Cybertruck production ramp up will impact margins negatively. However, if demand continues to be strong, I believe the increased production costs will not be long lasting and maybe in 2025, Cybertruck will start being cash flow positive. Tesla also slightly missed the EPS estimations. It only missed by 2 cents. For non-gap EPS, the expectation was 73 cents and Tesla reported 71 cents. However, gap earnings came higher at $2.27 a share. But this was mostly due to a one-time tax benefit of $5.9 billion in Q4. And perhaps the icing on the cake was the company's outlook. Tesla expects the vehicle growth to again slow this year as well. And Elon Musk said himself that without tariffs, Chinese car manufacturers will pretty much demolish majority of other car brands. All right, let's look at some numbers. With today's stock price of $193, Tesla has a market cap of $604 billion. Tesla has $29 billion of cash and $5.2 billion worth of debt. The enterprise value, or basically the cost to acquire Tesla as a whole, comes to $580 billion. Tesla brought in $97 billion in revenue last year and $15 billion of net income. Tesla also brought in just $4.4 billion in free cash flow, 42% lower than last year. With these numbers, Tesla is now trading at 44 times their earnings. Take into account that this also includes the $5.9 billion of tax benefit Tesla received last year that we talked about earlier, remove that from the net income and the valuation even becomes more expensive. Tesla is also trading at six times its revenue and 132 times its free cash flow. Which is extremely high so if you buy Tesla today as a whole you need to collect 132 years of free cash flow to just break even. Okay enough with bad news on the positive side in 2023 growth trend remained intact and Model Y became the best selling vehicle of any kind including all combustion engine cars and then full self driving continued to improve and the growth in other segments were quite decent actually. Energy generation and storage revenue grew by 54% and services grew by 37 These two segments are continuing to account for the larger portion of Tesla's revenue, which is exactly what we want. Because these two segments are the ones that can bring high margins and can convince investors that Tesla is not just a car company. And also we should not forget that although last year was a total disaster in terms of earnings, Total revenue still grew by 19% year over year. Production increased by 35% for the entire year up to 1.85 million vehicles. And vehicle delivery grew by 38% for the entire year up to 1.81 million. And yet another positive point is Tesla's balance sheet, which is very well structured and healthy. Especially the fact that they have more equity than total liabilities. 
With this balance sheet, even if sales won't grow this year, Tesla should be fine in the coming years and they are in a really good position liquidity-wise to continue investing heavily in R&D to further develop their full self-driving and other AI adventures such as Optimus Robot. And it is important to know that the decreasing trend in cost of goods sold per vehicle also continued in 2023, reaching just above $36,000. This decrease in basically manufacturing costs should by itself improve margins in the long run. I was the other day looking at the EV market shares in Europe and Volkswagen Group is the only one with more market share than Tesla. But you've got to remember that in Europe it's mostly Model 3 and Model Y that are selling because Model S and Model X are subject to import tax and are not selling that well in Europe. And then you compare that with all electric models of Volkswagen Group including uh, electric cars of Volkswagen, Audi, Porsche and all other brands that Volkswagen Group owns. But then there is a threat of Chinese car companies. BYD, for example, that has grown significantly recently. They have around 71% year-over-year revenue growth compared to Tesla's 19%, and they managed to register 40,400 electric cars in one week in January, and Tesla managed to register 11,700 cars in the same period. They also have a higher net margin, but they're not only selling EVs, so that's gonna help the margin in a way. One of the bear cases that can be made against Tesla is that Tesla is now trading at a much higher PE ratio than other car manufacturers. For example, BMW is now trading at five times its earnings and they pay a generous 8.7% dividend, which technically should justify a higher PE. But you see, the thing is that BMW is far from a growth stock and you can see that in the past vehicle deliveries. And I'm sure that BMW will start selling more electric vehicles, but it come at a cost of selling less gasoline cars and I bet this will impact their margins. All right, let's talk about valuation and where I can see Tesla heading in the next seven years in terms of price. I assume that vehicle revenue grows by 10% until 2030 and energy and services increase by 25% each over the next seven years. With these assumptions, Tesla will bring in $229 billion in revenue by 2030, with 70% being from vehicle sales, 13 from energy and 17% from other services. And I think we can all agree that these are not a very outrageous assumptions. They might be a little bit conservative as well, given all the possibilities that Tesla has in the future. Given that the services and, and energy share of revenue grew in our assumption, net income margin should also slightly improve from around 15% currently. So I assume around 18% in 2030. With these numbers, Tesla will bring in around 41 billion in net income by 2030. And assuming that the number of shares will increase by 2% every year until 2030 with the PE of around 35, the stock will hit 403, which is lower than the previous all-time high of 407 back in November 2021. But in case it hits $403 in 2030, it translates to around 13.5% annual growth every year from the current price until 2030. All right, clearly Tesla is not in the best position currently, but I think the company will come out just fine. Man, it might be that we have a rough 2024 and even a rough 2025, but I cannot justify myself to sell my shares. I will not be adding any share to my portfolio, but I'm keeping what I have. Okay, thank you very much for watching all the way to the end of the video. Please consider subscribing and liking the video. And let me know which stock do you want me to dig into next.